Hello fellow computer enthusiasts, my name is Christian, hope you're doing well today. In today's episode of ILTP WC, we will secure our home lab services with valid wildcard certificates provided by Let's Encrypt. And I will show you how to use traffic as a reverse proxy in a containerized setup and with static local services. So let's follow me into my home lab and let's get started. SSL certificates are used to encrypt and secure the connection between your browser and the website that you are looking to. The idea is that no man in the middle can look into your connection and read what you are sending or receiving, which might be personal information such as passwords, credit card numbers and everything else you're providing in the internet. Take a login into your bank account as an example of such a connection. Besides the encryption that prevents others from listening to your connection, the SSL certificate signed by a trusted certificate authority or just CA also ensures that your browser validates the answering server, meaning that the certificate contains the information which belongs to the certificate's domain so that your browser can validate that the right server is answering the request. There is an attack called DNS poisoning, where attackers try to manipulate so that your bankaccount.com does not lead to the bank server. Instead, they redirect to the website that tries to steal your bank information, which then will get declined by your browser because the attacker server doesn't contain the private key needed in order to decrypt the request signed with the certificate's public key provided by your SSL certificate. If they instead try to send you a self-signed certificate that's not from an official CA, your brother will warn you that the answering server cannot be verified. And if all that doesn't convince you, in a home lab scenario where most of our DNS records point to a IP address only available in our local network, you might want to have SSL enabled just to avoid annoying warnings in your browser or you need it because your self-hosted application want to enforce valid HTTPS connections, which also is valid for some kind of applications. Let's have a quick recap how the setup works in our local network, typically used in our home lab scenario. If you are already aware of it, just skip the chapter. To use domains in your local home network, you can either create DNS records that, that points your domain to a local IP address within your home network, or use external IP addresses that can be used from the internet, which also implies exposing your service to the world, which is not recommended, and can be a huge security risk if you don't know what you are doing. My recommendation would be to create DNS records that point to a local IP address or reverse proxy to a local IP address. That means that all your services are only available within your local network by your domain, but you can also connect to them via VPN, for example with WireGuard, which I have also explained in a previous video that you can find here. You could also go with some kind of a hybrid virtual private cloud approach, which I will cover in one of my upcoming videos, so make sure to like and subscribe if you are interested in those home lab topics. As mentioned, we can either create a DNS record for each domain and point it to the IP address of the server hosting the service that we want to reach by the URL. That is what you might want to do if every service has a distinct IP address, like it can be easily achieved with Unraid's Docker container configuration, or if your services are running on different hosts in your local network. But the more likely scenario is that you host a bunch of services on the same host with the same IP address. And you need to differentiate the services by their exposed ports. In this case it makes sense to have a reverse proxy in place that is able to translate domain names into services. Remember a reverse proxy like Traffic or Nginx is a server that sits in front of a web server and, and forward client requests to those web servers. The reverse proxy is typically used to terminate the SSL or TLS connection with a client and can provide additional features such as load balancing or caching in order to search a huge amount of, of simultaneous requests. 
In my home lab and for most of my clients, I'll go with traffic as a reverse proxy because it has a great load balancing capability and makes deploying microservices very easy. It can be easily integrated in an existing infrastructure, whether it be containerized with Docker or Docker Swarm, Kubernetes and Rancher or others, and is able to configure itself automatically and dynamically. The only downside with traffic that I faced during the previous years of usage is the misleading documentation because there are different versions that aren't compatible to each other and the handling of SSL certificates in a Kubernetes environment because you need additional software like the Cert Manager to use traffic, non-enterprise version, with Let's Encrypt in a Kubernetes environment. If you want to know more, you can find a link to my Kubernetes video and the configuration down in the video description. Before we get our hands dirty configuring traffic and let's encrypt, let's first talk about the SSL certificates that we want to use in our home lab environment. In most cases you will end up with a scenario where you have a top level domain like iltpwc.com and many subdomains like plex or your service name .iltpwc.com pointing to your service. To get a valid certificate for this domain, we could either acquire a certificate that fits the subdomain and only and exactly the specific subdomain, or we can go with a so-called wildcard certificate which, ma which matches a whole level of subdomains regardless of their subdomain names. My recommendation is to go with a wildcard and use it for all your subdomains and that is the configuration that we will now create for our test environment. As always, you will find the working code on GitHub, link can be found down below in the video description. And before we get started, please keep in mind that Let's Encrypt offers a sandbox where you can try out your source code. That is important because there is a wait limit and if you exceed, you will get banned or blocked for at least two weeks, I believe. The first thing that we need to do is to tell our domain provider, I mean the registrar, that we want to manage our domains on a different name server that is capable of working with Let's Encrypt, which unfortunately isn't the case of my provider one.com, or at least wasn't the case when I configured my setup. In my case, I want to manage my top level domain iltpwc.com on the DigitalOcean's name servers, because I really like the service that these guys offer, and this quote is not sponsored. Next, we need to create a DNS A record for every subdomain that we want to use with traffic. In our example configuration, we will create a subdomain called traffic, another one called web and another one called static for our non-containerized services that we want to handle in traffic. Please notice that each of these subdomains are directed to the same server which has the IP address 192.168.23.140 According to the website, Traffic is an open source edge router that makes publishing your services a fun and easy experience. But to be honest, only if you understand that there are two different kinds of documentations, one for version 1 and the other one for the current latest version 2. In general, traffic takes an incoming request and routes it to your service. And the difference between a traditional reverse proxy and traffic is that you don't need to configure all of these routes by hand by yourself. Traffic is able to configure its route automatically and find the possible routes to your services, for example in a containerized setup with Docker or Kubernetes. Okay, and what you see here is my sample Docker Compose configuration where we will spin up a traffic container that is configured for the domain traffic.iltpwc.com that you can easily identify looking to the labels assigned to the container. Please keep in mind that you can do the configuration also in a file and write it down in the traffic YAML, but you can also do it with environment variables if you like. When I choose Docker Compose, I always go with labels because that is very easy to understand and to maintain in an infrastructure as code environment as I have it in my home lab. Okay, and what you see here is my sample Docker Compose configuration where we will spin up a traffic container that is configured for the domain traffic.iltpwc.com that you can easily identify looking to the labels assigned to the container. 
Please keep in mind that you can do the configuration also in a file and write it down in the traffic YAML, but you can also do it with environment variables if you like. When I choose Docker Compose, I always go with labels because that is very easy to understand and to maintain in an infrastructure as code environment as I have it in my home lab. So first, let's have a look on the different um, items that we can configure for traffic. So at first we have entry points, which is in the most basic forms just a port number. So for example, for web secure, it's 443. So the next item that we need to discuss is called a router. A router connects a request to your service, applying different rules to identify what kind of request it is. So looking to the host, pass, headers and so on. And you can also apply something called middleware, which may update the request or make decisions based on the request, such as authentication, rate limits, headers and so on. And then we have the service itself, which is responsible for configuring how to reach the actual service that will eventually handle the incoming request. That could be something like just an URL and your request gets forwarded to it. Or it can also be a load balancing. For now, traffic only supports round robin based load balancing, but that is fine for us. So the last item in traffic's configuration is called a provider that discovers the service that lives on your infrastructure. So I mean the IP, health and so on. And in this example, we have two routes configured directly um, for the Docker provider. And that is to the service HTTPD, which will serve a static website, as well as to the traffic dashboard so that we can uh, have a look into traffic and see that everything is working fine. We will also have a file provider where we directly specify and configure a static route to a given IP address when a request on static.iltpwc.com comes into our traffic instance. Okay, and I see here that I will forget to write down the static route in the configuration file in this video, but you will find them on GitHub because currently I'm recording the video and the audio separately and therefore, and sometimes also I make a mistake, so sorry for that and let's continue with the topic. The first thing that we configure in our traffic YAML is that we want to have the dashboard enabled. Next, we define two entry points. One is called web on port 80, which has a rule to redirect to the entry point web secure. So we do not allow HTTP traffic going through our traffic instance. Next entry point is called web secure on port 443. That's where we have the TLS protected connections. We will use the middleware secure headers and we will also have the TLS set resolver let's encrypt configured for our domain and you have to add your domain as well as a wildcard domain in the main and send section that you can see here. So next we need to tell traffic what kind of providers we want to use. In our case it's docker so we have to pass the endpoint to our docker sock as well as a file called dynamic.yaml but you can name them whatever you like. Another kind of provider could also be a Kubernetes ingress controller. That is a provider that watches for incoming ingress events. And you can also add Rancher directly as a provider and use the same label technique as for Docker to get all your services configured in an automatic fashion. So, and the last thing in our traffic YAML is a configuration of our certificate resolver. In my case or in our case, it's Let's Encrypt. And we need to define where to store the acme.json. That's where all the secrets are stored. So we have also to make sure that this file has appropriate file permissions. You also need to add your email account that you want to use with Let's Encrypt. And in my case, we use the DNS challenge method in order to get our certificate. And therefore we need to provide the um, provider which is called DigitalOcean in our case. So and I also have a delay before check of 120 seconds. Okay, you may ask yourself, what is the challenge for Let's Encrypt? So when you get a certificate from Let's Encrypt, they need to validate that the server and the domain is yours and you can control both of them. And therefore, they need to challenge, according to the ACME standard, that you are the owner of the domain. And you can do this with an HTTP challenge as well as with a DNS challenge and also with other kind of challenges and all come with different flavors and have their pros and cons. If you want to know more about the different challenge types, Let's Encrypt offers a great documentation on their website. And the next step is to write the dynamic.yaml file where we specify the middleware, in our case secure headers, where we want to enforce the redirect to SSL, as well as a user authentication with HTTP basic out for our traffic dashboard. You don't need to do that. You can also launch the dashboard without a password if you like. 
And the last configuration is the options for our TLS connection. In this case, we add the default cipher suit that we want to use. And as mentioned, I forgot to write down the configuration for our static route. So I will show you one from another project and you will find the correct configuration in my GitHub repository as mentioned. So what I have done here is configure router. I call it Glance Secure because it's for the service glances. And it has one rule to match the host header called glmalfalax.gubis.com, which is another domain of mine. And I also defined the service called glances to use a load balancer and have defined directly the server URL, which is in my local network. So, and that's it. Now we should see a working configuration with SSL for all the domains that we have configured. Thanks for watching this episode of ILTP WC. I hope you liked the part where I was talking directly into the camera when I explained stuff. If you like those things, please let me know in the comments because currently I'm very unsure how to mix and edit my videos. So I have the feeling that um, it's better to have a personal connection. So seeing my face in the camera, I mean, it also feels a little bit weird to be honest. Um, but if you like that, please let me know that I will include it in future videos. Okay, that's it for now. If you like what I'm doing, please consider subscribing and please like the video. That really helps a lot and makes a whole lot of a difference. And in the next episode, maybe then we will do the 24-hour Create a Classic Doom from Scratch Challenge. We will see. Thanks a lot for watching. <laughs>